So thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming, um, especially in this harsh weather. Um, today, I'd like to talk about Gromov's conjecture and topological jigsaw puzzle. So basically, this is about a very basic and elementary property for a world in a free group that is called that will be called polygonality. So I'll talk about its definition, examples, and the decidability of it, as well as its motivation from three manifold theory. So it's roughly speaking, it's like uh, playing a jigsaw puzzle, playing a jigsaw puzzle in a topological sense. In some sense, it is the most natural notion of jigsaw puzzle, as you will see. So first part is a joint work with Henry Wilton, who is in Caltech right now. And it is about the definition and motivation. So motivation is the following. The virtual locking conjecture, which is made by Walthausen, states as follows. Uh, basically, it is about compact orientable irreducible three manifold, but because due to the proof of geometrization conjecture by Perelman, the, the only remaining case right now is this hyperbolic case. So for each closed hyperbolic three manifold M, there exists a finite sheeted cover M prime that admits certain nicely embedded surface. More precisely, if there exists there exists a pion injective map from a pion injective embedding from a closed surface of non-possible characteristic into M prime. So this virtual locking conjecture still on result for this closed hyperbolic three manifold case is of self central importance in three manifold theory, classification of hyperbolic three manifolds groups, hyperbolic manifolds. And obviously motivated from this conjecture, another conjecture from three manifold theory, which is weaker than virtual locking conjecture, asserts that every closed hyperbolic three manifold group contains a surface group. So by a surface group, I mean the fundamental group of a closed surface of non-possible characteristic. So this non-positive coverture of non-possible characteristic just means that we exclude sphere or RP2s. Then on immediate corollary, if virtual Hawking conjecture is true on immediate corollary, would be if one has closed hyperbolic three manifold group, the fundamental group of closed hyperbolic three manifold will contain the fundamental group of certain closed surface of non-trivial type. But that corollary is not really a corollary because virtual Hawking conjecture is still unresolved. But that corollary has been recently proved in August this year by Kahn Markovich. Pointing to a much more general direction, Gromov once messed, well, I, so this is the surface of conjecture, which is now a theorem by Kahn Markovich. That is, a closed hyperbolic three manifold group contains a surface group. But still, the general virtual Hawking conjecture is unresolved yet. A pointing to a much more general direction, Gromov once asked every one ended word hyperbolic group contains a surface group. So for this, well, let us briefly recall the definition of hyperbolicity. So we say that first of all, x suppose x is geodesymmetric space, a metric space such that two points can be connected by a geodesy. Suppose x is a geodesymmetric space, and suppose x satisfies the following condition: for each geodesic triangle. say PQR for each geodesic triangle PQR well there's a universal constant so if say geodesymmetric space and say delta is given positive number now if for each geodesic triangle joining PQR the n delta neighborhood of the geodesic joining PQ is contained in the union of delta neighborhood of PR union with delta neighborhood of QR. If this is satisfied, if, if for each geodesic triangle this is true, then we say that X is delta hyperbolic. So given geodesic metric space and given certain delta constant, if this condition is satisfied, that means if you consider some kind of banana-shaped region around the geodesic and consider those two, the other two 
banana shape GDC regions. If the union of the other two banana region contains all the delta neighborhood of GODC joining PQ, then we say that X is delta hyperbole. So this is Grumov's insight that in this very simple but very robust notion can generalize the Riemannian geometric notion of non-past curvature or actually curvature bounded above by zero. So this is the notion of delta hyperbolicity and we say that group is delta hyperbolic. Group, say finitely generate group is delta hyperbolic if it's Kelly graph which is considered as a metric space such that each side length is one is delta hyperbolic. Well, G is, sorry, G is world hyperbolic, sorry. G is world hyperbolic if Kelly graph is delta hyperbolic for some delta. For some delta. So again, this appears as Gromov was generalizing the study of Riemannian manifold whose curvature is bounded above by zero. So, Right, right, thanks. Right. The GODC joining PQ is contained. So in other words, any point here, right, any point here is contained. See, any point is either delta close to one side or the other side. That's correct, thanks. Right. So delta hyperbolicity and delta world hyperbolic so the final generic group means the Kelly graph is delta hyperbolic. So Gromov conjectured that every one-ended world hyperbolic group contains a surface group, and this is natural generalization of surface subgroup conjecture. This one-ended well, world hyperbolicity is just generalizing the hyperbolicity of three-manifold group that it was motivated by, yes. Uh, sorry, can you say briefly what is one-ended? Yes, so that's where I'm getting to. So one-ended means basically there's a theorem. So one-ended means, roughly speaking, if you look at the Cayley graph, and if you consider larger and larger compact subsets, then the direct limit of the complement will have more than one component. But in this group theoretic sense, what is more important is that there's a theorem by Stalling asserting that a group has more than one end if and only if it splits as graph of groups over finite groups. In other words, so this one of them is why do we have to only consider one of these groups? Because uh, Stallings has proved that, say, group has, so the number of ends of group is more than two, if and only if G can be written as fundamental group of some graph of spaces, such that the edge groups are finite. So pi 1 is finite. <coughs> pi 1 of finite. And if this kind of group contains a surface group, then one can show that one of the vertex groups must contain a surface group. So you have only to worry about one end of the case to ask about surface subgroups of world hyperbolic groups. So this in some sense, one-ended group is some kind of group that cannot be decomposed anymore in the sense, in the, regarding the question of surface subgroups. So for example, free groups is not one-ended. Obviously, that doesn't contain a surface group, although it's hyperbolic. Or virtually free groups, a group that contains a free group as a finite index subgroup that, is also, that has also many, many ends and we exclude those cases. And Gromov conjecture was, if we exclude those cases, free groups or virtually free groups, groups having many, many ends, you will encounter a group that contains a surface group. Okay. So this 
very general and actually very bold conjecture. Regarding this very bold conjecture, there haven't been many results. One result recently provided in 2004 was Coxel groups contain Coxel groups satisfy this conjecture. If a Coxel group is one-ended and world hyperbolic, then it contains a surface group. It is provided by Gordon, Long, and Reed. And it is pretty much case by analysis. First of all, they showed that if a Cox group, the diagram of a Cox group is a cycle, then it contains a surface group. And then they show that if the diagram is, say, complete, then they show that either it is some kind of complex, hyper, real hyperbolic reflection group, or it is virtually free. And using some graph theory and decomposition theorem of graphs, chordal graphs, they showed that every one-ended world hyperbolic coxal group will contain a surface group. But other than that, not many cases are known. Almost no cases are known. I'll state the, another result that is related to Gromov conjecture. So consider a finite graph of free groups with the cyclic edge groups. That is, basically speaking, the group, fundamental group of graph of spaces where each vertex space is a graph so that the pi one is free and you attach several cylinders several cylinders corresponding to cyclic edge groups if you construct such a surface then abundant examples of one-ended world hyperbolic groups can be made in this construction graph of free groups with cyclic edge groups in other words take many many graphs each graph the pi one of a graph is free. And you attach several cylinders. The pi one of a cylinder is Z, cyclic edge groups. And according to JSG theory, this is basically a ba basic step to go forward to the study of one-ended world hyperbolic group. And Kallegar in 2004 recently proved that for this kind of group, Finite graph of free groups. Finite graph means there are only finitely many vertex spaces, energy spaces. And if a finite graph of free groups is one-ended in world hyperbole, and it, in addition to that, if second rational homology is non-trivial, then it contains a surface group. Because very little is known about Gromov conjecture, this result was very surprising. But in some sense, well, considering the three-manifold theoretic motivation, it is an obvious theorem, or at least we know where to start because the second racial homology is non-trivial, so we have non-trivial two cycles, so we have at least some place to start from. And we have only to build up, using some non-trivial state, we have only to build the pi on injective, close the surface using that two cycle. And the more basic step is when you have only two vertex spaces. So that is, if you have, say, group, which is often by taking amalgamated free product along cyclic subgroup, we call it as a double. This is nothing more than you take a pi one of, you take a k pi one of free group. In other words, say, bouquet of several circles corresponding to f, and bouquet of several circles corresponding to f. And we glue a cylinder reading w, reading w. In other words, we glue one boundary component along the loop reading the word. Say the word is A, B, then you read, you consider the loop reading A and B, and glue one boundary component along that loop. And do the same thing for the other part. And consider this space, and we call pi one of such a space as DW, double. So this is really, really baby, baby basic case for the graph of free groups with the cyclic groups, but still, it is unknown whether it contains a surface group when it is one in the world type of body. Yes? So do you mean by this graph construction that you, you amalgamate the groups along the subgroups? That's correct, yes. Yes, and I'm just okay. explaining the definition of it. Yes. Okay. Right, so, well, to state certain Gromov conjecture for these double groups, it is useful to consider several notions from three manifold theory. So we say that. A subset of words or a word in the free group is disk busting. If it's the realization, bust any essential disk. What does that mean? 
That means you consider, say, say free group is given, say free group is generated by A1, A2, AN, or simply in the rank two case AB. Then one can realize this free group as pi one of handle body H. Solid handle body, just like this. It's like filled in several hold donuts. So this is H. Then whenever one has a subset of words in F, one can realize U as one sub manifold in the handle body. Say U consists of just one word, then it will be a one sub manifold, actually. Right? And we say that U is disk busting. If and only if A is disk busting, that means whenever also A will be, so U will be realized by A, which is some kind of one sub manifold in the handle body, just like this. Something like this, some kind of one sub manifold in the handle body. And we say that U is disbusting if A is disbusting. That means whenever one considers a properly embedded essential disk, that disk is being bust by that A. In other words, whatever essential disk one considers, whatever properly embedded disk one considers such that the boundary, well, it is not cutting out the three, three ball. Whatever essential disk we consider, that disk will intersect A. So that is, so in that sense, that disk busting, the choice of the word disk busting is natural. It busts, it intersects any essential disk. And another terminology is, well, basically one word is busting if and only if that realization of one word busts any essential disk. And that is combinatorial group theoretic implication. That means W does not belong to any proper free factor of F. Just for example, say W is say AB, and say free group is ABC. Then W belongs to a proper free factor, AB. So W is not this busting. But if you consider say A square, B square, C square, one can show that this is this busting. And then why do we start, why do we want to start from these doubles of free groups? Basically it is because one entities and world hyperbolicity have simple combinatorial group theoretic formulation in these cases. The one entities, world, world hyperbolicity is formulated as W is root free. Root free means it doesn't contain, it doesn't have any proper power. No, it doesn't have any proper root. In other words, W is not a proper power, it is not a square or cube of something. In that case, we say that W is root free, and Bessner-Fein's combination theorem asserts that this double is word hyperbolic if and only if word is root free. And this double is one ended if and only if W is disk busting. W doesn't belong to any proper free factor. Therefore, Gromov conjecture for doubles of free groups take as follows. If the word is root free, it is not a proper power, and it is disk busting then does DW contain a surface group? So as I said, this is really starting point, the first step to study sub surface subgroups of general one-ended world hyperbolic groups, and really baby case. But it is, at the same time, there doesn't seem to be any reason to believe that this double will contain a surface group. This is some kind of just take free group, free group, you glue a cylinder. Why would it contain a surface? Why would it contain a surface group? So there doesn't seem to be very little reason to believe the group of conjecture even for these cases. And today I'd like to talk about certain sufficient conditions for this double to contain a surface group and try to convince you that, try to give you a graph theoretic conjecture that will imply group of conjecture for doubles of free groups and talk about the decidability of the conjecture. So let us briefly recall 
what people have done about these doubles of free groups. Basically, this is started by Danny Wise in 2000, and also it was recently used by Gordon and Wilton to compute, basically, second homology in certain cases of these doubles. So as I said, the double, say when the rank is 2 and the free group, free group is generated by A and B, one can construct an allenberg maclean space, the k-pi-1 of this double in this way. You take bouquet of circles and bouquet of circles corresponding to the free groups and glue a cylinder, say the word is B inverse A, B, A squared. Glue a cylinder and glue the boundaries of cylinders so that one boundary component read the word on one side, the other boundary component read the word on the other side. Then this, the space thus softened, called XW, will have the pi 1 as the double, and one can show that this is k pi 1 actually. It's really the most natural notion of constructing a space which, have, which has double as the pi 1, isn't it? And one of the ways to see that this is k-pi-1, the contractibility of the universal cover, is you, if you say the world is B inverse A, B, A squared, then you divide one boundary into five parts, reading B inverse A, B, A squared. Do the same thing. So reading B inverse A, B, A squared. And do the same thing for the other part. Then one can construct a square complex. You divide the cylinder into several squares. And the space that's often is now consists of, consists of several squares, several squares, and it is so-called more natural, more general notion of non-positive curve square complex. So there is certain combinatorial analog of non-positive curvature in the category of square complexes. And there is a general theory proving that this is k pi one. Universal cover is always contractible. But there are many other ways to see that this is just k pi 1. Just. And now we want to find the surface group in the pion of this space. But this consists of just one cylinder. Right? So it, is, it seems even less likely that it contains a closed surface. Why would it contain a closed surface? This just consists of one cylinder which is glued in a complicated way on both sides. Why would it contain a closed surface? So, well, and it is almost always impossible to find a closed surface homeomorphically embedded in this space. So what we do is we go to a finite cover. And there's a special type of finite cover, which is also considered by Danny Wise and Gordon Wilton. Special type of finite cover that is particularly easy to construct from this space. That is done as follows. Take a finite index subgroup of F prime say so take a finite index of group F prime of the free group F and we consider so called if you can recall from from sophomore algebra cosec Cayley graph of the F prime of the free group F that is nothing more than finite cover of the bouquet of circles corresponding to the finite index of group F prime so it has certain special property, special property, that at each vertex you have only one incoming AH, one outgoing AH, one incoming BH, one outgoing BH. In other words, it is the covering map is local homeomorphism onto the bouquet of circles. So we consider finite cover corresponding to F prime. And we do the same thing. So and we take a second copy. Second copy. So consider so take a finite index of group F prime and take a finite cover corresponding to F prime. Now what we consider is consider all the liftings of the loop reading the word in the bouquet of circles. Here in the bouquet of circles, the word was B inverse A, B, A squared. So we consider B inverse A, B, A squared. Consider that loop and we lift it to a loop using Finite, the covering theory, loop, lift the loop in the finite cover. So say if you lift it from blue vertex, you read B inverse A, B, A squared. 
it goes back to blue vertex. If you lift from, say, green vertex, you read the inverse A, B, A, A squared. Go back to the green vertex. Sometimes you will have to lift square of a loop. If you read from red vertex, the inverse A, B, A squared, you go to the next vertex, you read the word again. The inverse A, B, A squared, you go back to the red vertex. So sometimes you will have to lift word squared. Sometimes you left lift the word, word, cube, and so forth, some powers of W, so that you get a loop in the finite cover. So consider all those liftings and glue cylinders along those liftings. Glue cylinders along those liftings. And do the same thing for the other boundary. And then one can easily show that there is a finite cover. So, of course, the general finite cover of this space can be very complicated, general graph of spaces. But this special type of finite cover is particularly easy to deal with. Excuse yes? Topologically, in your uh, covering, you don't care where the covering map is ramified or unramified. Like right, yes, I don't care, basically. So, right, we take a finite cover, right, and just glue cylinders, yeah, and yes, right. It is just pure cover. And actually, one can always choose this finite cover as regular cover, too. Oh, really? Oh, so, so, so I think so. So um, this picture, this example is not regular, right? All right, yes, yes. But yeah, one, can, one can go higher. One can go higher. Say, take a conjugates of f prime, intersection of conjugates of f prime, all the conjugates. That is the finite index of group of f. Also, you can assume that regular cover Right, yes, okay. right. But you're right, you're right. So, so if you consider arbitrary f prime, it will never be regular. But we go to the higher cover, we can go to a regular cover. So we'll, we're going to consider this special type of finite cover and we'll try to find a closed surface here. Why would we do that? Well, let me justify the motivation for doing that in the next slide. So let us call this y of prime w and just recall it here. Observation is, if some finite cover, some finite cover of the original space contains a closed surface, then this will also contain a closed surface. That is fat one, which is not completely trivial, but not hard to show. If some cover contains a surface, then this special cover will contain a surface. That is fact one. And fact two is any closed surface here is nice and will satisfy us in the sense that any closed surface is union of some cylinders such that it is non-trivial type and pi on injective. That is fact two. So we have only to find a closed surface here. And that is actually equivalent to finding a closed surface in some arbitrary cover of the original space. Once we find the closed surface in this special type of finite cover, that will, be, that will never be sphere or RP2, and that will be pion injective, so we'll be satisfied. So we have only to find a closed surface in this special type of finite cover. But still, why would you believe that it contains a closed surface? Well, it has several cylinders, so it is a little bit more likely than before that it might contain a closed surface. So let us see whether it would easily contain a closed surface or not. So suppose we have found a closed surface here. In the previous slide, I've stated that if some surface is there, that it will be union of some cylinders. There's points at topology. So if Suppose this contains a closed surface, then there will be union of some cylinders, let us say S prime. So suppose we have found a closed surface here. Then we do this process. Cut the cylinders into halves. Cap them off. And reduce the heights to zero. And call it as Z. In this way, first of all, from the original complex, say y of prime w or whatever it is called. By this process, we get a new complex. 
new polygonal complex. This is a complex such that one skeleton is called a calligraph, and we have several caps, several discs attached along, liftings of the loop reading the word in the original complex. So we get a new complex, and moreover, the surface S prime now becomes, instead of union of cylinders, the surface S prime became a surface consisting of disks, just like that. If we had a surface consisting of cylinders, then a surface in this new complex will consist of disks, caps, such that the boundary will read word, word square, word cubed. So, if one considers, say, so in other words, this new complex Z will contain a closed surface, closed surface, such that the boundary of each disk will read some power of W, because originally, cylinders were glued along liftings of the world. So one skeleton, in other words, say, because the one skeleton of Z is coset calligraphed, it immerses, locally injects into the bouquet of circles, bouquet of circles. Calligraph quotient by F. Because it is, it is basically local homeomorphism. Therefore, the one skeleton, some complex of this Z, one skeleton of this new surface S, will immerse into this bouquet of circles. What does that mean? That means that is combinatorial meaning, concrete combinatorial meaning. The new surface we get consists of disks, consists of disks, and it is polygonal complex. It, is, it consists of several polygonal disks, and each edge is decorated. It is oriented and labeled by A or B, just like because the one skeleton of Z was such. So each edge is oriented and labeled by A or B, generators of the free group. And at each vertex, one does not see any two incoming edges, incoming edges same label or two outgoing edges of the same label. That's the meaning of immersion, because this one, so basically, one skeleton of this new surface is subcomplex of Z, subcomplex of this finite cover, coset calligraph. Therefore, one will never see any two incoming edges same label or two outgoing edges same label. So let us summarize what I've talked about so far. Well, basically, before doing that, let us do some easy all the characteristic counting. So conversely, well, one can show that if this new complex contains a closed surface, then one can reconstruct closed surface in the original special type of finite cover consisting of cylinders. That process is by drilling, puncturing each disk and double along the holes. That is the reverse process is obvious. You just puncture each disk and double along the holes. Therefore, all the characters counting is if the surface in the original special type of finite cover as prime will have a characteristic twice of or characteristic of this new surface minus number of punctures, number of disks. And one thing that I should have mentioned before is the fact that we're going to use about word hyperbolic group is if G is word hyperbolic, then it doesn't contain a torus group. It doesn't contain a torus group. Now, if the special type of finite cover contained S prime. There will never be a torus because of that observation. If S prime embeds into IF prime, then there will be realized a surface group in the double, and there will never be a torus because we are assuming that this double is word hyperbolic. Therefore, this only occurs if chi S prime is negative. Therefore, chi S will be less than M. So let me summarize what I've talked about so far. And that will be actually a definition later. So observation is, let W be cyclically reduced root free disk busting word, just like, say, word is B inverse A, B, A square, for example. And suppose we have found the closed surface in this special type of finite cover. Then what we have deduced so far is following. There exists a side pairing of some polygonal disks, some disks with polygon structure on the boundary. And there's an immersion from one skeleton of one skeleton of this complex S into 
bouquet of circles, bouquet of circles corresponding to Cayley graph over F. Such that this immersion determines this decorating of the edges. Each edge is oriented and labeled, and that immersion condition means also that at each vertex, one does not see any two incoming edges or two outgoing edges, same label, such that the boundary of each polygon will read some power of W. And all the characteristic of S minus M will be negative. In other words, all the characteristic of this new surface will be less than number of disks. So we're going to promote this as the definition. The uh, branch covering in there, the motivation is, motivation is, the surface of the surface. If you have the surface of the surface, you will have the surface of the surface. Our goal is to make one puncture. Yes, to make one puncture. To make one puncture, 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 to and in some sense, it is very natural notion, although it is, <coughs> it takes some time to get used to it. It is very natural notion. Given a cyclically reduced word in a finite general free group, we say that W is polygonal. If and only if one can build a closed surface consisting of disks, consisting of disks, and one can orient and label each edge by the generators of the free group, such that the boundary reading of each polygon, the boundary reading of each polygon is some power of W, and all the characteristic of S is less than M. So let me say a word about the natural, why this is so natural. So remark, first one is, immersion condition means that at each vertex, we do not see any two incoming edges of the same label, or outgoing the same label. What about number two? Is this artificial? It is not actually. Why do you want to put this chiasis less than M condition? Well, it's really like a topological jigsaw puzzle. You want to just play a puzzle by several pieces. Each piece is a polygonal disk, disk reading the word, word square, word cube, and so forth. So there are lots of lots of jigsaw pieces. And your goal is you want to solve the jigsaw puzzle in a topological way. You want to collect the jigsaw pieces. And by side pairing, side pairing, you want to build a closed surface. And one condition that makes this definition useful is at each vertex, one does not see any incoming edges or outgoing edges same label. That's all, basically. That's all. Why do you consider number two? Well, without number two, that puzzle is too easy and not useful. Without number two, one can too easily solve that puzzle. That is, chiasis is less, le, equals to M, if and only if S is sphere with two cells or RP to the one cell. And those two cases are just too easy to achieve. For example, sphere with two cells. You just, just take a polygon reading the word and take the same polygon reading the word and identify just corresponding the edges. Then one gets sphere with two disks. That's just too easy. And it turns out that that solution is useless for our purpose. RP to the one cell, same thing. Take a disk so that the boundary reads, say, word squared. And consider the boundary identification of pi rotation. One gets RP to the one cell. So that is always achievable. The solution is too easy, too cheap, and useless to us. Excluding those two cases, this definition as to whether there is a, some kind of non-trivial solution to that jigsaw puzzle. So, to me, it seems like it is, so Wilton and I think that it is the most natural notion of topological jigsaw puzzle. I, 
for a brief moment, I was thinking about building some kind of puzzle company or construction company using this definition, but it turns out that my friend's son was already playing with a puzzle, something like that. He was playing with some kind of sphere consisting of 60, um, 60 hexagons, something like that. Such that each hexagon, hexagons are all identical. So, so kids are already playing with this jigsaw puzzle. Now we are allowed to build another, another types of surfaces like genus 1, genus 2, and so forth. So, how much time do I have? 20 minutes? Okay. All right, so let me, so, so we have built this definition. Let me, let me give you some minutes to stare at the definition because this will be so central. And just stating this definition is the most central part of this talk. Right? What you want to do is given a one word, cyclically reduced word. Cyclically reduced means you basically have a reduced word A, B, A inverse, B squared, and so forth, such that the first letter and the last letter are not canceled either. Just like you do not see A, B, A inverse, B squared, A inverse, something like that. The first letter and the last letter are not canceled. That's the meaning of cyclically reduced word. So given a cyclically reduced word, we say that W is polygonal if and only if W is a proper power. That is just assumed for some easy technical reasons. So let us just leave it there. So polygonal if and only if word is proper power, square or cube of something, or one can solve this jigsaw puzzle. Several, take several jigsaw pieces and do the side pairing. And the only condition that one will really have to worry about is at each vertex, one does not send it two incoming in the same label or two outgoing in the same label. So the discussion that we have made so far proves that if W is polygonal, then this complex will have finite cover that contains a closed surface. And the content of the theorem is that the converse is also true. So the world is polygonal if and only if some finite cover of this double complex will contain a closed surface. And that is basically using some subgroup separability argument. Well, using the fact that the full group is so-called subgroup separable. So all this polygonal if and only if this double complex virtually, virtually means some finite cover contains a closed surface. And the surface will be nice enough, as we said. The surface will be, well, non-trivial type. It's not a sphere or RP2, and it's pion injective. So we are happy. We find a closed surface from the double. So the conjecture is, so we do the we want to solve this jigsaw puzzle. So the conjecture is we can always do that whenever we need to do. Well, one remark to make before we proceed is sometimes it is impossible. Some word, for example, AB, AB square, AB cube is not polygonal. One can never solve that jigsaw piece. One can prove that. But still, we are safe. The chrome of conjecture is safe. Why? Because one can apply some automorphism of the free group so that the world becomes nice. So, well, basically the map is A to A and B to B inverse AB. Some, by some automorphism, well, no, A to A and B to AB negative squared. B, sorry, I forgot, but there's a map, there's an automorphism. It should be something like A to A and B to A negative square B or something. Something. So that it is automorphism. Yes. So by some automorphism, world becomes polygonal. Although it is not polygonal in the original sense. Therefore the double is still safe because this isomorphism type of this double will never change by applying automorphism on the amalgamating world. So it still contains a surface group. Actually, it proves something more than that. It is just proving that this kind of complex, so-called non-positive curve square complex, is not as rigid as one can expect. That is, basically, it is showing that there is some compact non-positive curve square complex, which is, which I do not want to go into detail, but non-positive curve complex, which is homotopic to a closed surface, but it never contains a homeomorphically embedded closed surface as a subcomplex. That is because this theorem precisely describes all the cases when 
some finite cover of this double complex contains a closed surface. So this non-polygonality will prove some non-existence of any closed surface in certain square complex. So this is some interesting remark. But the conjecture, the real conjecture is tiling conjecture. That is just asserting that. So we are interested in only disk busting world, as you've said. As you've said. We have only interest in disk busting world. And the tiling conjecture asserts that any disk busting world is polygonal. That is the original conjecture, but that turns out to be not true, as you've seen an example. So we put minimality. So minimality means the length of the world cannot be further reduced by applying any automorphism group of the free group. So if the length is as small as possible, then the tiling conjecture asserts that one can only solve the jigsaw puzzle. Is this your conjecture? Uh, yes, and we know a co-author. And let me give you more evidence of it. Okay? So one can only solve that jigsaw puzzle. Okay? And the tiling conjecture will answer the of conjecture for doubles of free groups. So for the remaining time, I'll give you some evidences of tiling conjecture. And let me give you the theorem that this polygonality is at least decidable. Given a word in finite time, one can show that the word is polygonal or not. And let me give you examples of polygonal words. So just purely for fun, let me give you one picture. Consider this word, AB, AB, A inverse, B inverse, B inverse. Consider this word. And we want to see whether the word is polygonal or not. We want to solve the jigsaw puzzle. So we take a triangle, which is actually a seven gun. Seven gun is, is septagon. Seven gun, reading the word. A, B, A, B, A inverse, B inverse, B inverse. And we want to play with this jigsaw piece to build a closed surface. Well, we take several copies, but still not closed, unfortunately. So we take another shape of seven guns, reading the word A, B, A, B, A inverse, B inverse, B inverse. We take more copies. More copies. And finally, we see a pattern. Look at the region bounded by red line. Then there's a z-to-action, up, down, and left and right. Z-to-action, preserving this red region, red region. So we build a torus by z-to-action, identifying those blue vertices. And the only condition, as we said, to check is at each vertex, one does not see any two incoming edges or two outgoing edges of the same label. So the world is polygonal. Therefore, Gromov conjecture is safe. The double will contain a closed surface. So this is just purely for fun. It is not saying anything general. This word is safe. One can play that jigsaw puzzle and solve it to build a torus, actually, in this case. Torus consisting of four cells. So there are other cases. For example, the word is given as, say, rank two. So rank two case is wide open too, but rank two case say the world is written as A to PI, B to QI. And such that there are no isolated generators. The exponents are all larger than one or less than negative one. Then it is polygonal, just like in this case. It is polygonal. So it is another interesting plane with the jigsaw pieces. Or one can consider the world of so-called length height one word word generated by A and A to B. And it is simple in the sense that the signatures of PIs are the same, signatures of QIs are the same. So it includes all the bomb slugs of the word, A to some power, A to B, to the some power, all the bomb slugs of the words. Or, just like second example, all positive and A to B powers are all negative. Then while we couldn't prove that this is polygonal, we have shown that it is polygonal with probability one, almost surely, in the sense that probability that a simple height one word of length n is polygonal goes to one as n goes to infinity. So if you consider longer and longer words, it is more and more likely that that word is polygonal. And for the second part, I'll be just brief about the desirability of polygonality. I'll just take the graph theoretical conjecture related to it. So to consider the desirability of polygonality, it is actually more natural to consider set of words rather than a word. So we consider more general Gromov conjecture. 
That is what we're going to consider is we're going to consider set of words u, and we're going to consider, say, consider bouquet of circles, and we're going to consider several cylinders. Several cylinders corresponding to the elements of u. And we're going to call this kind of space as D of u, double corresponding to set of words. And actually, this, the same argument will give sufficient condition for the double to contain a surface group. So just to recall, it is just same, same definition. So, so we're going to consider a set of words. So you say that a set of words is polygonal if and only if u contains a proper power, or we are solving the same puzzle, just we have now several types of jigsaw pieces. So that is, we're going to take a, pol say, polygonal, so it is the same definition, I'm just go going fast. So, so if we want to solve the jigsaw puzzle in the sense that we want to build a closed surface consisting of polygonal disks, now we are allowed to have some powers of any word in the set U. So we have several types of jigsaw pieces. In that case, and same all the characteristic restriction. In that case, we say that u is polygonal. So, and xu, as we said, will be the double corresponding du, and du will be pi of the double complex. Then u is polygonal, then this double will contain a surface group. So it is just more natural generalization. And probably I won't have time to go to the definition of why that graph. It is a very combinatorial way of representing a set of words or word in a free group. There is a combinatorial definition, although the graph itself is very much motivated by JHC Wydad in 30s to study which automorphism of free group and handled by this. Well, let me give you just definition of it, which is just two lines. Given a set of words, say U, the wide graph consists of vertex that plus and minus of generators. And for each word in the set, say V1, V2, VL, we add an edge VI2, VI plus 1 minus. So when I first explained this definition to a renowned graph theorist, she said, Jesus, that definition is confusing. Well, or Jesus, he's confusing that this is some acronym for JHCY that. Anyway, so, but once you consider the handle body motivation of this Y that graph, it is very natural notion. For example, if word is A, B inverse, B inverse, you join A to B. You change the sign of second one. B inverse to B. B inverse to A. B inverse to A minus, you change the sign. That's the definition. And there is a combinatorial definition of it, but let me just skip it. Let me skip it. We have only five minutes, and official time is already 10 minutes past. So let me skip the definitions, and let me just state the graph theory, because graph theoretical reduction of polygonality, because I See, this is the discrete method during the seminar, and I'm obliged to say something to the graph theorist. <laughs> so, let me state purely graph theoretic conjecture. So, setting is as follows you have a graph, you have a graph, say, finite multigraph. Multigraph means one may have more than one edges between two vertices without loops. So loop is not allowed. And we, well, it is general, but we have indexing of the vertices. Vertices can be written as a1 plus a1 minus up to an plus an minus, such that degree of ai plus is same as degree of a minus. That is the second setting. This first setting is very natural. Second setting, it puts some restriction. Degree of a1 plus is same as degree of a1 minus. And the third setting, there's so-called link enumeration method.
So there's an indexing of links. By a link, I mean basically a incidence relation. That means a vertex and edge means a link. And the link enumeration means it is some arbitrary, arbitrary map such that each vertex you put one through the degree, one to three, one to three, one to three, one to three. If the degree is five, then degree is five, we put just one, two, three, four, five. That kind of map is link enumeration. So at each link, at each vertex edge pair, we put a number so that the counting is one through the degree at each vertex. One through the degree, one through the degree, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then maybe it's arbitrary. That is a setting. That's all the setting. And the assertion to imply Gromov conjecture for doubles of free groups is the following. The assertion or conjecture is the following. There exist simple cycles C1, C2, C3, up to CR. Simple cycles in the graph such that, just like in this case, there are four simple cycles, C1, C2, C3, C4. Simple cycles such that for each simple cycle and a vertex, one sees a number, say 1, 2, right? If you consider this triangle, you see 1, 3 at A, 2, 3 at A minus, 2, 3 at B minus. You look at those numbers. Then those numbers, assertion is, numbers can be coupled, can be paired. Say, look at red. At A minus, you see 1, 2, and A plus 1, 2. We call such a pair as coupled. Say you, what is sky color? 1, 3, A is seen as 1, 3, A minus. You couple A and A minus. Purple, 2, 3 is seen, appeared in A, B minus. And purple, 2, 3, is that purple? Yeah, purple is seen at B also. And 2, 3, green is seen at A minus. And 2, 3, green is seen at A. So the assertion or conjecture is one can take, one can find some simple cycles such that one can pair the vertices of the simple cycles in a way that A is paired with A minus, A with paired with A minus, B is paired with some B minus, B is paired with some B minus, such that the two numbers that you see at each pair are the same. So that is a long, it might seem like a long statement, but it is actually, it turns out, a simple linear programming problem using the graph. So given a graph, one can formulate the matrix equation, which is equivalent to that. So at least the result is polygonality is decidable. So tiling conjecture is equivalent to that statement. Therefore, polygonality is decidable. Did I state somewhere? Yes, polygonality is decidable. And using this, one can generate lots of lots of more, more and more examples of polygonality. Basically, given a word, it is not too hard to determine whether it's polygonal. And I do not know any counterexample of tiling conjecture. So let me stop here. Thanks.